Okay, we have here today the integral from 1 to 2 of e to the x over x times the Dirac delta function of x minus ln 3 dx. Okay, it's interesting because there's a few things we're not used to dealing with, and yet this integral is not going to be too bad. The first thing, ignore this part for a moment. Think about this. Well, if we just had the indefinite integral of e to the x over x, this is going to be our exponential integral. We don't have a value for this in terms of standard functions. So we just use this thing like this. But in a definite integral, it doesn't get that much better. Like the solution, if we do it that way, let's see if we put in bounds on this, I mean, we might write the solution as exponential integral, exponential, exponential integral of two minus exponential integral of one. But what's that? It's, um, it's actually not bad from the graph, okay? As far as getting an estimate, we don't have an easy way to actually calculate that. I don't have a good way to just integrate that and get a nice exact answer, but the graph, maybe that's a bad version of it because it really spikes pretty quick with the exponential on this. But it's gonna be pretty easy, like if, if let's say this is one and this is two, there's this area is somewhere around three. It's really not bad as far as an estimate goes. You can kind of eyeball it and get pretty close to three. But as far as really, we want an exact answer to this, this doesn't help us so much. The thing that's gonna really save the day on this is having the Dirac Delta function in it. Because as crazy as it is, it actually is quite simple. All we're really saying with this is it's kind of like, it's kind of like, we can kind of see this as some kind of like instantaneous change in a system for generalizing it. Like this is going to be our A value, some constant value. Let's say A is over here. Well, we can write this function just kind of like as an arrow. And this arrow doesn't really show us what's going on at all because this graph is actually going to infinity, right? And so we've got no way, there's no way to represent that in a graph, but this is flying off to infinity and it's got no width. So we have this kind of dilemma in the way we're defining it, whereas on one hand, if it's going to infinity, you might think maybe the whole integral diverges. And then on the other hand, this thing has no width. Okay, so then you might think, well, it's just zero because it's not, there's no width to it. So usually when there's no width, we consider the area zero. But we have it defined that the area on this thing is just going to be defined to be one. And so knowing this area is one, what we can do is basically consider that everything Everything outside of this one point we can consider as zero or zeroed out because we're like essentially multiplying by zero in all these areas here. And then it's like we're multiplying by one at this point. So what that means for an integral is like usually it's written, I think like this, if it's going from zero to infinity and we've got some function X times our Dirac Delta function, then all we do to find the value of this integral is just evaluate the function at A. So we're saying this thing it's just going to be f of a, because even though it's going from zero to infinity, all this other stuff doesn't matter. Now in our integral, we're just going from one to two, but it's the same idea. It doesn't matter if we're, if we're in here somewhere, it's got the same effect that everything, even within, let's say there are a values between one and two, everything outside of the a value gets zeroed out and we still just evaluate at a. The only thing you need to be careful about is like, what is the a? If we're going from one to two, if the a was like over here outside of the bounds of our integral, it wouldn't do anything because it's zeroing out everything. So the key is what is this ln3? Well, ln3 is something like approximately 1.09 something. Clearly it's within our bounds here. So it's not gonna be zero. We don't have to worry about that. So all we need to do is evaluate this at ln3 so for our, we want f of ln3 on this, and it's going to be e ln3 over ln3. But e to the ln3, that's just going to be 3. So put it together for my final solution. We just get 3 over ln3, and that's it. Okay, so there you go. Not too bad. Pretty quick and easy. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.